Scuba Pro G250. This is the 109 on steroids. Scuba Pro got it right with this one for sure. Um, tough as nails. Keep going when others quit. I mean, it's just hard to beat all the way around. It's a great second stage, and it's even easier to service than the 109. So, uh, the uh, I did scan, and all the uh, part schematics for this and the the factory service recommendations are on the link where you're in the website store and you're purchasing the service kit for this. So. Uh, without further ado and uh, yakking, let's get to tearing it down. Um, there is a factory cover service tool that removes the cover. Probably don't have one of those. If you do, great. If not, uh, a lot of times you can get it by simply just pressing down and unscrewing it. If it's you know stuck, you're going to need to make alternate arrangements. Another way you can do it is is with a large spanner wrench and be sure it's got the large tabs on it. Wrap a couple pieces of tape around it. Center it good and be sure you hold down. Um, if it doesn't, you know, even with this tool, if it's still stuck, take the whole thing and since we're rebuilding it we really don't care, stick it in some hot water and just let it set for a few hours. Let it set overnight. Uh, it, hopefully it will you know, dissolve it enough to where you can uh, remove the cover which is we got to do that before we do anything else so I've got the factory service tool and we just remove the cover like so unscrew it so there'll be a friction washer and the diaphragm diaphragm on a G250 is rarely bad you can see this one's kind of a little crusty but soap and water will clean it right up be ready to use again. I picked this radiator particularly because you can see it uh, got a lot of corrosion on it, hasn't been well taken care of. So, get to work on that. Uh, the splined nut on the side requires the Scuba Pro tool to take off. A lot of times you'll see these are chewed up because people have taken them off with slip joint pliers or, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. If you don't have the tool that removes this, about the best thing you're going to be able to do is put several wraps of electrical tape around this and try some soft jaw pliers to remove it. Um, once again, it may be where you're going to need to soak it for a while, but it should never be put on so hard you, you can't easily remove it. But uh, as you can see, this one's got a lot of corrosion, so it may not come out too easy, but we'll give it a shot. Slide the tool over it. Once the nut comes loose, just unscrew it. Set it aside. Now, one of the, one of the many cool things about the G250 is is you can remove the whole air barrel, and it's a lot easier to work on when you got it out of the regulator. Simple to do. You just depress the lever with your thumb, finger, what have you, and push out from this side when it gets when you get some movement to it when you get it moved about here past the square just turn it sideways whole thing slips right out a couple of things on the case the exhaust valve is rarely bad on these but you know since we're tearing this one all the way down let's go ahead and take it all the way to the the little parts uh, on each side it's the camera's going to have a really hard time focusing in this dark space. There's two Allen screws, one on each side. Once you take the Allen screws out, the center section slides out. And when you're cleaning, be sure you clean those two holes where the Allen screws go very thoroughly, because they get they get a lot of corrosion in them. Like I say, the the exhaust valve on these is rarely bad, but it's a good idea even if it's not going to be replaced to clean behind it be sure nothing's on there once again don't put silicone on silicone all the silicone does is become a big magnet for any piece of sand grit what have you put it in there it goes in dry we'll pull this one out because we're going to clean the case all right we're good there uh, the next thing we got to take out is the very vein. which is the Venturi adjustment. And it's held in by a C-clip. 
see if I can get enough focus in. You can see part of the C-clip right here. And you can push it out from the back side. The, the, the service kit comes with one. It's easier for me to show it to you after I get it out of here. There's the C-clip. A lot of times those are rusty, and I don't know why. That one's not too bad. And then you just have to take your fingers in there and work that varial vein out. There's no real way to push it out. It just take your take your tool that you took the lever out with and push it sideways. It'll come out. There's an O-ring on here. Right there that we need to replace. And that comes in your kit as well. Alright, we've got the case pretty well broken down and it's ready to clean. The air barrel is, I, I chose this one particularly because I know it has the old style rivet head poppet in it, so or the old style uh, eraser head poppet in it. So easiest way to do that is turn your knob in a couple of turns so there's no resistance on this pin and you should be able to simply, you now this one's really corroded, push it back or take your brass tool and just turn this to the side where it drops off like that and then that will pull right out that's your retainer then unscrew your the adjustment knob on it and there's some spring tension in here a little bit and you'll feel when you're out pull it out then tip it up you're gonna get your balance chamber that's something like a million bucks and the spring we're going to reuse uh, a couple of those parts, so don't uh, don't let them get away. Uh, on the uh, what's remaining here is this one needs to be cleaned inside now because I can tell there's a lot of corrosion in here. If you don't, if, if yours isn't corroded and it looks clean, shiny, you don't necessarily need to remove the lever because the least amount of times you can bend and mess with the lever, the better. Um, if you're going to go that route and leave the the lever intact. Just simply move it up, you see how it's a little past 90 degrees there, and you can, uh, and you can push your, your poppet out with um, you know, any, anything small diameter, because we haven't taken the, the orifice out of it yet, but uh, on this one, since I'm going to take the, uh, since I need to clean inside, I'll go ahead and take the poppet out of it as well, so try to make as little a bend as possible, keeping your lever as intact as possible, set it aside, then dump and you can see this has got the old rivet style pop it in it so we're going to need to replace that last thing to take out is the volcano orifice and that's an important important piece um, let me, I'm going to show you on the cutaway because it will make more sense you can see the, the, the volcano orifice threads into this section but it's also held in tight by an o-ring on it so as you unscrew it uh, it's only going to unscrew so far and then it's going to feel like you're not going anywhere. That's the friction of that O-ring still holding it in there. So we got to get past that. Another important part is be sure that you have a screwdriver that fits that head. Don't use one that's too small or the taper's wrong on because it'll, it'll, it'll mess it up. So you just kind of have to uh, unscrew this until you feel you, you, can, you can feel it that you're not going any further. Then take any, any brass, plastic, wood dowel, put it in there, and push out the orifice. O ring on there, we got to replace. And then on the air barrel, take your brass pick and remove two O rings there. And there. You'd remove your, the O-ring on your, on your volcano orifice, also on the adjustment knob, and then on the, uh, the vario vein is on there. And it's, it's a little tricky because it's a really tight fit O-ring on there. And uh, I, won't, I won't bore you with me. Well, all right, I'm boring you. There we go. We got that O-ring off too. All right, now we've got it disassembled and now it's time to get it cleaned up and uh, get it ready to put back together.
Now we've got all the parts to our G250 cleaned up, it's uh, time to put it back together. In the interest of time, I, I went ahead and put on uh, some of the, the basic parts that really don't need a lot of explanation. Uh, when you put the uh, exhaust housing back on, be sure uh, to make sure that the, the hex head female threads are cleaned out and put a little uh, silicone grease on the threads of the, of the hex head screws as you put those back in. Um, also the vein diverter, I always say I call I say Vivo, which I believe is correct, or, but I've also said Vario vein, so bear with me on the terminology. When you put this back through, uh, on the receiving female side, I'd put a little lubricant in there, and the same with the O-ring around it. Um, you're, once you push that through there, you'll feel it lock in, and you may have to fidget a little bit to get the C-clip over there, but be sure you get that uh, on there correctly. And then also double check once you before you push the whole assembly together that you have it with the notch facing towards the mouthpiece, so it, the directional of that works right. That's pretty much covers it for the housing for the moment. Take our air barrel, got it cleaned out. We got the two O-rings on the side. Just uh, you know. When you lubricate these, be sure they're just enough lubricant to make them wet, not a bunch of excess on there, not necessary. Um, need to put back on the demand lever, and you want to make sure the demand lever goes on the flat side because that will be facing towards the diver's mouth. Like I said with this, don't spread this open, don't, you know, try to keep it as uh, the way it, it was when you took it off. There you go. Next, we're ready to put together the uh, put the uh, poppet assembly in, and I'll show you on the cutaway so you'll see exactly uh, exactly what's happening. Um, if you saw the 109 video, I, I talked about the lever and how it was easier to put together the poppet on a G250 because you can move the lever uh, a little past 90 and makes the whole assembly slide together a little easier. So, and I went in and I colored in the tabs the feet on that one so you can see. Um, when As this goes together, the feet engage the two tabs on the lever and that's the critical part. And it's really, you know, really simple to do. Um, slide, to, s s slide together like this. Hold your, hold your lever back just a little bit, not a lot of pressure, just a little bit to keep it a little past 90. Then your spring and balance chamber would go on, and then you would take your adjustment knob and just push the whole thing in there. And you see how it clicked right into place. Check your demand lever, be sure it's working correctly. You let that focus a little bit there so you can see it. As I'm depressing the lever, you can see it's extracting it or pulling it back from the volcano orifice. It's working correctly. Everything's good there. So if we take our air barrel, we've got our lever on there. Take our volcano orifice and lightly grease the O-ring and lightly grease the threads. Insert it and you're going to have to push it with your thumb to get it started. And then take, take your screwdriver and it'll, you'll, you'll see it'll push down. All right, and then you just screw it in until it stops. All right, hit a stop, and then back it out. Uh, you know, about a turn and a half should be good to get us in the in the wheelhouse there. All right, we're good there. Now we're ready to put the pop it in. Flip it upside down. pop it because when we slide it through there we want the feet to engage the two tabs there hold the lever back just slightly and you'll know when you get it adjustment knob that we put the new o-ring on with just a little grease and a little grease on the threads slide together and boom
everything's working smoothly there. Go ahead and turn your adjustment knob in till you can till you can see light through the hole. See how there's light through the hole where the, the retaining pin goes? That should be good there. Grab your housing. Depress your demand lever. And you're going to feel a little resistance because the O-rings are new and they're going to want to make their way through. Get it lined up on the other side. All right, now when you're about yay far in, go ahead and turn. Let that pop up. And then with your palm, push it into place. Be sure your demand lever is working freely. Then add just a little lubricant on here. No, not excess. Spin that down and whatever tool you've got to do it with, it does not need to be crushed on there, just snug. And then go back over and put your pin in the demand lever. Sorry, I'm going to have to move that away from the camera so I can snap it into place. And it snapped back into place. Go ahead and turn your adjustment knob all the way out till it stops. Now you notice, if I get a good shot, the demand lever is low. So we know that going into the adjustment part. Our diaphragm's all cleaned up. Once again, don't put silicone on a silicone diaphragm. It's like putting water on water. Your friction washer. Then the cover, screw it down, and it only needs to be hand tight. All right. You can align the if the knob doesn't align, you can remove the cover and turn it slightly till it lines up for the perfectionists in the bunch. And it's going to a customer, so before I get done with it, I will uh, I'll do that. All right, we are set. Uh, we're back together and now we are ready to do uh, hook up the air and do the final lever height adjustment and uh, get it wrapped up. We're ready to do the lever height adjustment and final setup on our G250 and so let's get started. Um, easiest to start here, if you take a look at your volcano orifice here, this is how we're going to be adjusting the lever height. Um, by turning this clockwise, you're going to be decreasing the lever height. By turning it counterclockwise, you'll be increasing the lever height. And the idea is to get the lever as high as possible without a free flow. Now, some folks like to have theirs adjusted a little bit differently. With the adjustment knob all the way out, they like to have just a very slight bit of free flow that need, uh, that'll need to turn the knob in slightly just to, to stop the free flow. That way they're 100% you know, sure they're getting the best flow possible. Um, you can do it that way. You can do it to where there is no free flow. Um, so six and one half does the other, your choice. To adjust, of course, you can use a screwdriver. It works just fine. Uh, you know, the, with that, you have, to take, you have to purge the air, take the hose off, make the adjustment uh, each time. If you're using the screwdriver, uh, make adjustments slight or you know not abruptly make it a quarter no more than a half turn at a time and purge it recheck it and you know double check it again uh, for time's sake I'm going to use uh, a inline adjustment tool they come in various varieties this is one I sell it's a uh, it's a relatively inexpensive one this is the original type this is an old Peterbilt tools inline adjustment tool that broke my gauge a long time ago. Uh, this is an inline adjustment tool with a gauge. Uh, my buddy Randy at uh, Piranha carries those if you need, uh, need one with all the bells and whistles. It's very simple to use as you hook the, as you screw this into the regulator um, and turn the air on, the air is going to retract it because of air pressure but as you push it in you'll see that it will engage the two notches on the volcano orifice and allow you to turn it one way or the other. Uh, when you're setting it up, you know, hopefully you're using the first stage that uh, you use with a, 
uh, with your second, but you know, even not, as long as your first stage has between 150 and 145 PSI, it's you know, pretty well good to go. So first things first, put the inline adjustment tool on. Hook your thread on your LP regulator hose. And turn the air on slowly because you may be, you may, depending on where you set the volcano to begin with, you may have a lot of free flow and you may need to shut it off quickly. So slowly turn it on. All right. I've got air pressure to it. Must have the lever set really low because I can't even get any uh, purge out of it. So uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, turn this in and I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise. You can hear it start to free flow slightly. So I'm going to move it back just slightly. Then purge it a couple times. Pull it close to your ear, listen for leaks. Take a few breaths. Everything's working good. Pretty well have this set up. G250 is very easy to set up. Now, one thing on the, 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 the G250 is the vane adjustment has some specific ways of testing it. And for sake of time, I did not, uh, I, I won't go through those, but uh, if you look in the, the, the manual, the, the link is uh, from the video and also on the in the website store where you purchase a service kit, there's a link to the manual. And it'll, it goes into detail on how to check both uh, your vein setting and for testing your file setup. So after that, shut your air off, purge it, remove your inline adjusting tool. Hook up your hose, tighten it securely, and you are, your G250 is ready to go. Hope you found the video informative. Um, if you have questions, you can send me an email. Visit the website store. You can purchase uh, all the parts you need to service your G250, as well as links to the factory manuals if you'd like to see those. And, and I highly recommend you do a review of those when you're doing it. I appreciate your time.